Hello, my friends. Um, there is an occasion this year, especially like exactly this month and these days, that um, I'm celebrating my big first adult date in, um, in tango, the 20 years since I started it in the year 2000. And when I thought about this day last year, two years ago, how I'm going to celebrate it, well, the last thing that came to my mind that I would not be able to dance tango. <laughs> so now I have to find some other way to commemorate <laughs> this wonderful day that, that um, changed my whole life. Um, so I decided to make it a series, like probably 20 of short stories on my history in tango, not because I am such an important figure, like, you know, to make memoirs, but maybe these personal stories would also be of interest uh, to many of you as an example of a journey in tango, of, as a kind of uh, a discourse to the last 20 years of tango in different countries that I lived and worked and danced. Um, so today I'll start with the first one which is about how and why I came to tango and how was it in the very beginning. So just a little bit of uh, history before. Um, when I was a little girl, like four or five years old, of course, like many girls, I already dreamed to be a dancer and I had my long skirts and curtains that my dad always wanted to throw away because he called me a gypsy when I was wearing them and I loved to put on this like floor length skirts and, and dance around and and um, make my concerts on the bus stops and saying like no I'm not gonna start now because there are not enough people yet so let's wait until there are more people and then I'll perform and then I would be singing and dancing you know like and all the repertoire of the most popular Russian singers of the times um, then I started my dance school at five and pretty much that was it. So I kept dancing classical, ballet, folklore. Um, this was a choreography group that made uh, performances and everything. Um, so I kind of imagined this being also a big part of my future. Um, and when I was in high school and I had a little bit break from dancing because this, the studies were more intense and... and I told my parents that after I graduate, I want to go to Israel to study modern dance. Why Israel? Well, in Russia in those days, modern dance was not really a big thing because it was so much dominated by classical ballet. And to be a uh, professional in, uh, in dance meant in Russia to actually dedicate and sacrifice your life and, and be a ballet dancer from like nine years old, you had to go to a boarding school and live there and then basically this would be your whole life and being. Um, since I didn't do that, I, it was not really a, um, a thing for me in Russia to become a dancer, so I wanted to immigrate. And of course my parents were very much against immigration at 18 years old, what, you know, dancer, even less, I mean, Israel, oh. Um, so they said that I had to get uh, education first, <laughs> and education is always like something serious. Certainly not theater and no dance. Uh, so I went to this good school to become a theater producer, and I studied for five years, and I graduated with so-called red diploma. It's like when you have all the highest marks, and they uh, invite you for free to postgraduate program, but postgraduate program didn't happen because tango started and I dropped it but that's another story so how did I hear of tango I had this uh, group of, of uh, people with who uh, we did a lot of creative projects and one of those gave me a piazzolla CD and when I heard it I was like so impressed and so in love and I was thinking how can you express this with your body? This music is so powerful, so full of feeling. Um, so what do you do? And this kind of planted a seed already. And then there were a course of coincidence. The same year, I went on a student trip to the United States. And the in-flight program, which was then only audio, was the Forever Tango musical that was uh, on Broadway then. And... Um, 
I was listening to it all the nine hours and then um, I was dreaming to, to come and see it when I was in New York but unfortunately they went on tour because it was summertime um, so I didn't find anything then I was walking on the same trip I was walking in the Central Park and uh, something like uh, 6 p.m. And then I hear music, it's again tango music, so I rush there and there is an open air milong on the little square in the park. And uh, people immediately seeing my interest, like you know, we tango dancers do, are trying to help and convert the, the curious newcomer and teach him. So they tried to teach me the basic aid step. And it was like really awkward because I, I was wearing these high platform shoes, I only wore this kind of shoes in that period <laughs> and uh, they were trying to make me one two three cross uh, like I didn't understand why cross and when and which leg so I was like nah. and they were saying no you should come to our studio dance sport and, and take classes and of course I couldn't uh, I said I, I'm only a tourist here so I cannot really go um, but that was my like second chance with tango Unfortunately, in Russia, it was not yet, uh, it was not yet there. Um, and then, only after a couple of years, uh, again, another coincidence. I'm graduating, and my graduation day ceremony, me in my like ceremony dress, um, meeting my non-tango, not of course non-tango, <laughs> my not non-school like friend, uh, and he says, "Oh, my office is right here. Do you want to pop by?" And and uh, get this book that uh, I need to give you back. So I went there and I hear his colleague speaking on the phone on the other desk and she's saying, oh yeah, yeah, well, I'll meet you at this tango evening today. I didn't know her, but I grabbed her and I'm like, hey, can I come with you to this tango thing? And it was kind of not very, it was a strange thing to do to grab in a person who you don't know and were not introduced to and say, can I come with you? But hey, Danny. Uh, but I was like, it was my chance finally to, to grab this magical tango ghost that was haunting me for the last two years, three years. So I went to this uh, thing, it was the milonga, but that milonga was very different from what we have now in Moscow. It was a very little dark place, a coffee shop and uh, there were probably only like 20, 30 people and there were like four or five couples dancing, all young crowd. And this was the tango scene in Moscow then. Uh, they were all young people. Um, so I went there and I saw, like was introduced to the teacher, Valentina Ostinova. It's like a mother of tango in Russia who brought it there from Holland then. Um, and I asked her like, oh, I don't want to be, I want to be with you guys, uh, why, how, when, can I start, uh, where are the classes? And she said, oh, there are no classes because we're closed for summer break, um, September. I'm like, no, September, now it's June, <laughs> I can't wait that long, uh, what else? And she said, oh, there is this uh, workshop of the visiting Argentine teacher from Washington, D.C., Eduardo Fernandez. Yes, I'm signing up. Uh, so I signed up for both beginner level and intermediate level. There was no advanced level. But <laughs> maybe I would have signed up for that too. And there was this like, you know, good Samaritan older guy, always happy to, to teach a newcomer, young girl, uh, whatever he knew. Um, there are always guys like that, thanks God, you know. So <laughs> he was helping me. I went to both courses. Then after one month, there was another workshop of Metin Yazir, um, who came to Russia very often in the beginning of tango. So I went to both levels of that one too. So when September came, I was already an every night tango dancer, basically all milongas and, and, and practicas, whatever they was, I went to. And then I started regular classes. There was only one group, small group of people. And um, then me as like kind of like a hot new girl who was talented because she did dance before, uh, I was put in the couple sort of like, you know, together as a partner of, with the one guy who was the most like hot guy there in terms of like he was the most advanced as much as you could be a dancer that um, 
young tango scene and then uh, we started to dance together and, and uh, our teacher told that we have to prepare a choreography for a concert and that was like several months after I started tango but in Moscow it was a big thing then there were these like little concerts for friends and family and uh, it was half kind of theater little scenes of the milonga of things that were happening at milonga you know like some situations and a little bit of dancing with some like you know classic tango poses a little bit walk here and there boleo ocho you know things like that but we enjoyed a lot uh, doing this thing and it kept us motivated um, so we started to prepare this choreography for December and then what happened next I will probably tell you in my next piece 